Hey, hey, Eric. What's up? Play that one Mastodon drum solo really quick. Oh, I know the one. Yeah. That's, that's the best one. Hey, play that play that other Mastodon drum solo. You, you know the one. Oh, I know yeah. the one. Yeah, that one. I, I know the one. Hey, play, play the other one. Play that. You know what I'm talking about. Oh, the one where he's like, this he's is the like, best one. Yeah, he's like, that one. Play it. Play that one. I'm liking that. So let's start with just a little bit of a quick recap on Mastodon's history. Um, so they started up with Remission back in 2002, and by that point they were just a primal sludge act. Um, they had a little bit of that progressiveness, uh, but really they were just very broad, they were very hitting, very punchy, very raw. Um, from there they actually moved into Leviathan, which a lot of people felt like was an improvement, it had a lot more of those progressive touches. Um, in a lot of aspects, it was just an entire improvement. Uh, people considered that to be their magnum opus, and Eric and I totally agree with that. Uh, Blood and Thunder, almost the entire track listing was a positive. Um, from there, we're going to move forward, and they had Blood Mountain, which I felt like was a little bit of a warning sign. Um, the songwriting was a little bit uh, brought in, round in. It just felt uh, a little bit less complimentary to the progressive overtone that they had been working with before that. Um, it wouldn't be until a lot later that we kind of saw where that would lead. Now from that album we got Crack the Sky, which a lot of people thought was them kind of broadening out those progressive influences, creating something that was uh, a lot more complicated, but in our opinion was a little bit more convoluted. I agree with that. I feel like most of the songs were too long, they were directionless. Pretentious. There was, there was a lot of experimentation, and experimentation is welcome, but I feel like it ultimately led nowhere. Right. And this is really important. It had a high concept that really didn't go anywhere, um, but it was an interesting idea. Um, so, cue the album after that, The Hunter, where they dropped all the concept work, they cut out all the prog elements, and really approached a very streamlined songwriting concept. Um, it wasn't well received by pretty much anybody. Curl the Burl was a fucking horrid single. It just felt like them beating their chest to some Nickelback shit. It, it was not pleasant in any particular sense of the word. So where was there to go from there? Well, you have Once More Around the Sun, which felt a lot like course correction, really. Um, it was a good CD. I, I particularly enjoyed it. I know Eric wasn't as cool on it as I was, but it, it wasn't a bad CD. So, where was there to go from that CD as far as songwriting, the way they've streamlined their approach? Well, it's kind of a mixed bag, really, but I think a little bit more good than bad. Um, Eric? Yeah, I feel like they're moving back in the right direction, but there are definitely some glaring cons that need to be addressed with this album. Yeah, there are. First and foremost, the vast majority of the album is the exact same pace. Most of the songs run together. Frankly, at this point, I can only tell you, a, pick out a few songs out of a lineup, and the rest all run together. So that is a major detriment to the album. It doesn't kill the album, but yeah. that's a major detriment. It really is. And I would have liked to have seen more variation, such as Leviathan, even Crack the Sky, while I wasn't a big fan of it, it had a lot of variation. It did. And nothing seemed to run together because everything was so different. Yeah, that's the biggest issue with the CDs, that a lot of the tempos are almost exactly the same. They're mid-pace, maybe a little higher than that, and they kind of go and go and go and go. And then you've got these big bombastic choruses, and the choruses, while they're really good, they don't mesh well with the verse structure. You've got the verse, chorus, verse structure, and then you've got this sweet-ass solo, and even though they are really catchy, they just... They're, they're all to the same effect, really. It's, it's just kind of a shame that you don't have something a little bit more interesting going forth from track to track in a concept like this. Yeah, yeah. You, you do good songs here and there that break from the mold, but for the most part, a lot of them, 
a lot of the songs could be left off the album and the album would be the same. Right, it really could. That said, another issue I have with it, which isn't as major as most of the songs sounding the same, is that the lyrics are downright hokey and cheesy at times. Yeah, oh yeah. The singles are the worst offenders of this. Show Yourself, which has the line, show yourself, show exactly what you're made of. And there are multiple songs throughout the album that have this almost inspirational, like, poster quality to the lyrics, right. almost. Like, something you'd hear on the radio, all, like, All That Remains or something. Like, right, it really like the song feels Stand like Up that. might be a good comparison. The radio, you know, Stand yeah, Up. I've, I've heard that song. And they're maybe not quite as bad, but I feel like there's a lot of that going on. And it it kind of makes me laugh at times. I... When I was listening to the album and I heard Show Yourself for the first time, I laughed and thought, it's, are they serious with this? Right. Is is this the best they can do? Because I remember Blood and Thunder and uh, the entirety of Leviathan was very carefully written. Right. And very, had very intricate lyrics as well as the album review preceding it did. Yeah. Well, I mean, and a lot of that can be attributed to... Uh, to Daler here, who does a lot of the drum work as well as the vocal work. The concept is really lyrically hinged uh, behind his uh, connections with his family and their cancer. Uh, he's lost somebody pretty recently, and that had a lot to do with the sonic concept behind the CD. Uh, really, the Emperor of Sands representing death, and uh, the sun and the harsh heat really representing the chemo treatments. He really wanted to play that up in the lyrics, but there's just this huge disconnect here um, between what's going into the album passion-wise and what's going on in the lyrics. It's just very hard to take it seriously. It really is. So, th all that said, there are plenty of pros about the album. Oh yeah, definitely. My favorite part of the album has to be the guitar solos. There are awesome, awesome guitar solos, mm -hmm. courtesy of Brent Hines, throughout the entire album. Uh, Roots Remain, Word to the Wise, and especially Ancient Kingdom. Oh yeah. Excellent guitar solos. Some of the best they've ever written. Oh, yeah. They've never been gigantic on their guitar solos, but they really stepped it up on this album. They really have. It sounds a lot better than it used to. Um, the big thing here is that they were really inspired by 70s, 80s prog, and a lot of those solos really show. Uh, they really sound a little bit more basic than some of the previous songs in their catalog, but at the same time, I feel like that really works to this album's benefit, because this album does harken back to those earlier albums. It does feel a little bit too nostalgic at points. But I actually feel like it's appreciated here, especially when you realize that it is a big concept kind of album. Um, I, I really enjoy that aspect to it, yeah. Brand's vocals really have improved here, and that's something that I do want to highlight. Despite the fact that I feel like a lot of his lyrics are kind of hokey-cheesy, um, they have really improved in the way they're performed and the way they're incorporated into Mastodon's sound. Um, before he kind of sounded a little bit too on the nose, he sounded uh, like he was pushing himself in directions that he wasn't capable of vocally. Uh, here he's incorporated quite well, quite nicely. Uh, he's doing some interesting harmonies. He's uh, just just really incorporating genres that, that are, are really on his level, on his playing field. Um, yeah, I feel like he, he's improved his vocals oh yeah. and his contributions in that department. Oh, definitely. He's a lot more emotional, too. He is, he is. Uh, just, just based on the concept alone, the way that it's really intrinsically tied to his emotional perspective here, uh, you can really feel how just electrifying his performance is on here. It almost makes up for the terrible lyrics and spots, because he really does put a lot of effort into them here. I, I gotta give him a lot of props here, because he, he does put his all into this performance. I find it really interesting that he does the drumming as well as the vocals here. It reminds me a lot of uh, King Fowley from Deceased, who also does drums and vocals. It's not an easy job at all, and the fact that he does both very well is just absolutely phenomenal. And I think that was another one of the big highlights of this album, too. You were talking about the drumming. Yeah, uh, one of the biggest highlights for me is absolutely the drumming. Oh, yeah. In the way that I feel like Bran has dramatically improved over the, the course of the past ten years or so. He really has, yeah. I, I'm of the opinion that he was a garbage drummer on the first two or three albums. Yeah. I know that's a minority opinion to have, but I always felt like he had no direction in his drumming. He was banging around randomly, doing the same fill repeatedly. It's, it's a very fast technical fill, but it sounds the same, and it's in every single song in the first three or four albums. Yeah. And on this one, I feel like he was able to vary his beats up much more, and the songs, they benefit a lot as a result. Yeah, they really do. They do feel a lot stronger as a result of him 
uh, varying his influences here. I know he talked about before the album came out that he had been directly influenced by uh, the drummer from Rush, as well as a lot of 70s and 80s psychedelic progressive rock bands. And, you know, it really shows here. I know the whole album is kind of hinged on that, but more than anything, I feel like the drums are a direct influence there. Um, so a, a lot of benefit here for really changing up his style and really decreasing the monotony, really, because it, it, it's getting really stale at this point. It really is. Um, so, yeah, a, a lot of improvements here, I feel like. It doesn't feel like business as usual for Mastodon trying to incorporate these mainstream uh, sounds into their... Uh, core sound, uh, they're bringing back a lot of those influences from previous records and doing a great job of it. Uh, is it a lot like Crack the Sky? I don't even like Crack the Sky. Does it sound like Leviathan? Does it sound like a broader, uh, high concept approach? Yeah, it, it really does. It feels like the band is going back to the way it used to be. Uh, that quality control is, is really coming back in full force. Um, I'm really happy with the way it turned out. Uh, I think I'd personally give it a 7. I agree. A 7 is perfect for it. Yeah. 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 So, as always, uh, my name is Marmaduke. Mine is... <laughs>